All right, guys. Let's try this. Melina, what is a standard? That which empowers decision makers and gives them more discretion. What does a standard do? A standard empowers decision makers. We went over this a million times yesterday. And allows more discretion? Mm hmm. A standard does what? Empowers decision makers and allows more discretion. A standard does what? Which empowers decision makers and allows more discretion. But hear my question and answer what I say. A standard does what? What does a standard do? It gives decision makers more discretion. Okay, and what's the other thing it does? What's another, what's another way to say that? It's written right there. It, he said, you told me the second one was the first one. What's the first verb, verb, object thing? Yeah, so it does two things. What are the two things it does? It empowers decision makers and decision makers more discretion. That's right. But what are the two things the standard does, Galena? And only what are the two things a uh, standard does. It gives the decision makers more discretion and empowers them. That's correct. Who is the decision makers that probable cause standard empowers? Eric? Judges. Where are they empowered to take action with the probable cause standard, Galena? Courts. Who, which decision makers are empowered, Emily? Judges. Where are they empowered, Emily? To do what, Emily? <coughs> guess if you have a guess. Always guess if you have a guess. Don't be silent. If you have a guess, I'd rather I would love to hear a wrong answer. That's fine. Eric, what what are they empowered to do in courts? The judges. Okay. So that means probable cause as a standard is what kind of rule? Yeah. Yeah. Evidentiary standard. Okay, evidentiary standard, yeah. So basically it's an evidentiary rule or I mean it's an evidentiary standard that it's not any kind of rule. Forget what I said there. I don't know why I said that. It's, it's insanity. I had mental failure on my part. It's not any kind of rule, okay? Probable cause is a standard, it's an evidentiary standard that evaluates whether or not evidence can be admitted into court. So when judges apply the standard, what they do is they use that standard to exclude evidence. All right, so probable cause, what two things does it do, Emily? It gives decision makers more discretion and power them. Okay, so who, which, who are the decision makers, Emily? Judges and courts. Okay, the courts are where they make their decisions. So who are the decision makers? And where do they make their decisions? Okay. Okay. And what happens if they use probable cause in court? What are they doing with it? Excluding evidence. Okay. If evidence is excluded from a court case, is the person is the person more or less likely to be found guilty of a crime? Eric? Less. Why? Explain. That doesn't explain why they would be less likely to be found guilty of a crime. That explains why the evidence was excluded. Why would they be less likely to be found guilty of a crime if the evidence is excluded? Um, oh. Eric? The cops probably wouldn't have had any more evidence. Okay, it's getting closer. It's because we're missing this piece, right? Who's the guy who, who says, Your Honor, jury members, everybody, I want to talk to you about Joe here. Joe here is guilty of a crime. 
I'm going to present evidence to you today to show that he is guilty. I'm going to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he's guilty of a crime. That guy's called the prosecutor. Okay? The prosecutor. Write that down. Prosecutor. Prosecutor. He's the guy who prosecutes people. Prosecutor. P R O S E C P R O S E P R O S E C Prosecute. U T O R. Prosecutor. Prosecutor. Prosecute me. All right, so the prosecutor is the guy who says, I say this person did it. I want you guys to find this person guilty. Now, he has to present evidence of a crime, right? So, do you guys remember what happens when evidence is excluded? It cannot be used. So that means the prosecutor now can't use the evidence. So Eric, you had the right answer. You've kind of said it wrong, but it's fine that you said it wrong. But uh, that if the cops don't have other evidence, you only have a certain amount of evidence. Like, let's say somebody murders somebody. Oh, I had the bloody knife with his fingerprints on it. If that bloody knife is taken away and can't be used as evidence, it's not like there's another one, right? You, only, you can't go back and recommit the murder to make more evidence. And uh, there's only one bloody knife. So, the consequence of that is excluded evidence will sometimes be the difference between being able to get a conviction or not getting a conviction, depending on how much evidence the prosecution has. If the prosecution only has one main piece of evidence, as is sometimes the case, then it would make it such that they cannot find the guy guilty of a crime, even if he actually is guilty. All right, so... Let's go through this chain one more time. Galena, what does the standard do? Two things. Okay, and remember, those two things that we're saying are actually two different ways of saying the same thing. To say that they empower is to give them more power. To say that they give them more discretion is to say they give them more ability to choose. Same thing. All right, so, but we have two different ways of saying it. Because when they ask us, well, what do you mean it, does it empower? You say, well, it means it gives them more discretion. Well, what do you mean by discretion? Well, does it mean they have better ability to choose? Okay? So, Emily, what, what are the two things the probable cause standard does? It gives the decision makers more discretion and power. Okay. Well, what... Does who gets empowered by the probable cause standard? Judges. And they are empowered to do what? Exclude evidence. Mm -hmm. What happens if evidence is excluded from a case? You can't use it. Okay. And if evidence cannot be used, what's the likely outcome of that? Eric? The guy that is guilty won't go to jail? The guy who's being put on trial won't go to jail. That's right. They won't be able to prosecute him or he'll be found not guilty or one or the other. Now, he may actually be innocent or he may actually be guilty. Regardless, uh, the point is that he won't undergo the legal processes that we would hope somebody would undergo when there's a crime to be resolved. We want there to be justice. It's not enough that, well, that the crime's not going on anymore. Well, too bad. We want justice. It's not adequate that, uh, we, that the person stop being a criminal. There's a need for an accounting to be made. Anyway, uh, so what's reasonable suspicion? Standard or a rule? Rule? Nope. Standard? Yep. Oh. Reasonable suspicion is a standard. What does it do because it's a standard? Belina, what two things does it do? It allows evidence. No, no, listen. It's a standard. What two things do standards do? We just went over it, Lena. It implies so reasonable suspicion does what? It empowers decision makers and gives more discretion to decision makers. Okay? 
So the next question, which decision maker does the reasonable suspicion standard empower? Yes, Galena? No. Yes? Correct. Where does it empower them? Where does the reasonable suspicion standard empower judges? Yes, Galena? Yes. What does it empower them to do, Emily? What does the reasonable suspicion standard empower judges to do, Emily? Eric? Uh, That's correct. You mean the answers are all the same? Yes. Probable cause standard. What, is it, what does it do because it's a standard? It empowers and it provides more discretion. The reasonable suspicion standard. What does it do because it's a standard? Okay, because it's a standard, it's being used by whom? The, the probable cause standard is a standard, so it's being used by whom? Uh huh. The reasonable suspicion standard is a standard, so it's being used by whom? Correct. And because it's an evidentiary standard, reasonable suspicion is an evidentiary standard. Yes, it is, just like probable cause. So, Eric, because uh, because reasonable suspicion is an evidentiary standard, what? Uh, what does it do? What happens if, if it's being used by a judge? Now, because reasonable standard is also an evidentiary standard, what happens when the judge uses reasonable submission? No, it's the same thing he just said. Exclude evidence. Okay? That's the only thing these standards are used for. If I said, this is the pickle standard, in order to make a case against somebody, you have to show that they like pickles. Okay, uh, so, okay well, actually, I'm, let's put it this way. Let's say it's an evidentiary standard called the pickle standard. And it works like this. These sunglasses are evidence in a crime. Somebody used these sunglasses to, I don't know, to, they, they reflected some light into somebody's eyes. And they went, ah, and they fell on the street and died. Evidence in a crime. But there's a pickle standard. The pickle standard says when you're a police officer, you need to put a pickle on the evidence and touch the evidence of the pickle before you can take it away. So now the, the cops took it away, but they didn't touch it with a pickle. They didn't have a pickle. So they just touched it with uh, a lighter, saying, well, that's close enough to a pickle. Now the judge goes into court and says, oh, you want to admit this evidence into court? And the defense attorney says, I object, Your Honor. That evidence should not be admitted. It was It's the fruit of an illegal search. And the judge says, well, what do you mean? The defense attorney says, these police officers did not touch that evidence with a pickle before collecting it. And the judge says, officers, is this true? Did you fail to touch the evidence with a pickle before collecting it? And the officers go, no, 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 we touched it with a pickle. We, we touched it with a pickle. We touched it with lots of pickles. Everybody touched it with a pickle. And then the defense goes, but look at this video. And it shows that the cops were secretly being recorded. They didn't know that. And the video shows that the cops did not touch the sunglasses with a pickle. So now the judge says, cops, I am very, very ashamed of you. You will experience no punishment or consequences at all. You'll experience no punishment or consequences for the illegal search. And because this is America, you will experience no consequences whatsoever for the perjury. However, you can't use these sunglasses to prove that Steve's guilty of a crime because you got them illegally. You failed to touch them with a pickle. Probable cause and reasonable suspicion are like the pickle standard. The cops have to do something before they can take the evidence. Do they have to touch it with a pickle? In real life, do cops have to touch evidence with a pickle before they get it? No. Okay. Um, in fact, if they did touch it with a pickle, it probably wouldn't count as evidence anymore. Because then it's not... Like, if you were trying to get, I don't know, skin... skin Samples off of it or something. Anyway, regardless of that. Uh, so, let's talk more about standards so we all have them down in our head. Two things about a standard, Emily. Number one, it... 
And number two, it empowers them with power. Yes. Okay. And how about reasonable suspicion? Is it a standard or a rule? Standard. Okay. Is it an evidentiary standard, Eric, or some other kind of standard? Evidentiary. Probable cause and reasonable suspicion are both what kind of standards, Glenna? Evidentiary. Who applies these standards, Emily? Where do they apply them, Emily? Court. They apply them to do what, Emily? They evidence. Okay, if evidence is excluded from a, from a case, uh, Eric, what's the likely outcome? Uh, the guy that goes to will go to jail. The guy on trial will go to jail. We don't know if he's guilty or not. That depends. But the guy who's on trial will be less likely to go to jail. Okay, so all right. So what do you do if your opponents say, "Here's my case. We should use probable cause because it is it will result in less searches, fewer searches." Okay. Does probable cause result in fewer searches? If we apply probable cause to kids in school, right now we apply reasonable suspicion. That means what? It means if the cops come in and say, that's it, I got Galena in handcuffs here, and look what I got from her locker. This bomb. And, and they go, well, did you have a reasonable suspicion to believe the bomb's in her locker? Yeah, I heard her talking about bombs earlier that day. Not having one or anything, we're just talking about them in general. It's saying, like, bombs are cool. That's a reasonable suspicion for me to look in her locker. Maybe that would pass. If that's not probable cause to look in her locker. So the judge says, okay, well, this is fine. You can convict Galena because she's a kid. So therefore, the bomb was uh, not, well, it, was it was legally obtained through search. Because the cops didn't need probable cause to search her. They only needed reasonable suspicion. Okay? So, if you are advocating that we should apply the probable cause standard instead of the reasonable suspicion standard to kids in school, you are advocating what? Explain it to me, somebody. <laughs> you are advocating, if you are saying, let's do this, if you are in favor of the idea that we apply the probable cause standard to kids in school, instead of the reasonable suspicion standard, which is the status quo, explain to me what that actually means we're doing. Um, the cops need a warrant to search the kids. That's not how I want you to argue it. Do they need a warrant in the status quo? Uh, yeah. No. Oh. Need a warrant for what? What if they don't get a warrant? Let's say let's say it was probable cause now. In the status quo, it's what? Reasonable suspicion of probable cause? Um, no. The status quo is reasonable suspicion. You guys are AF. You're arguing. We're talking right now as though you're AF. You guys are going to be arguing, if you're AF, that we should use probable cause. Oh. You're saying right now the reasonable suspicion standard is being used. Right now, which standard is being used, Emily? Reasonable suspicion. Is it for everyone or just for kids in school? It's just for kids in school right now, okay? So, does everybody get the reasonable suspicion standard right now? No. No. Does everybody get the reasonable suspicion right now? No. Does everybody get the reasonable suspicion standard right now? No. Does everybody get the reasonable suspicion standard right now? No. Does everybody get the... No. Who gets the reasonable suspicion standard right now? Public uh, In public schools specifically, Okay. Who gets the reasonable suspicion standard? Young scholars. Young scholars. Children. Okay, K through 12s. Uh, Eric, who gets the who gets reasonable suspicion as a standard? Kids. Okay, who gets probable cause? Everybody. Everybody else. Including kids. Kids get it when they're not at school. Okay? They just don't get it at school. So this resolution, the affirmation is saying, let's have, let kids get it at school too. 
Now, again, I ask you, according to our interpretation of this, when you are saying, yes, let's use the probable cause standard more, you are saying what? You're going to do what more? Exclude evidence. Right. If you're going to exclude more evidence, you are going to accomplish what? Oh. Let's keep it going. Uh-huh. So in this resolution, we're talking about kids. If you are advocating yes, we should use the probable cause standard for kids. You're saying yes, we should because we are going to... Um, um, exclude evidence. And that will mean... Less people in jail. Less which kind of people? Everyone? Kids. kids. Less kids in jail. Okay? Nobody thinks it's a good idea to throw children into jail, usually. Almost nobody does. For example, if Emily... Um, was outside and she committed a crime for some reason. It was she didn't mean to commit a crime, but she did anyway somehow. Like she was she was just spinning around with this with this twirling stick. And but in the video it looks like she's going like this and smashing the window. It was actually an accident. But the do a strange, weird kind of angle, it just looks exactly like she's intentionally smashing the window. So you know, therefore, she's committed a crime. Well, first of all, the cops come and they see Emily. They are, <laughs> I mean, they're not going to, they're not going to be very scared of Emily, right? So they're going to just say, oh, little girl, why did you do this horrible thing? And she's going to say, it was an accident. And they look at me, you're lying. And she goes, I'm not lying. And, uh, Regardless of what they determine about whether or not she's lying, she's not going to go to jail for it. it had nothing to do with that. She's not going to go to jail because society usually doesn't like to, in general, put kids in jail. However, in our case, we are arguing that because of the lower standard of reasonable suspicion, that means less evidence is thrown out in the status quo, and therefore more kids go to jail. All right, the status quo is means what? The way things are right now is the status quo. The way things are right now. Eric, what's the status quo? Uh, no, boo. The way things are right now is the status quo. What's the status quo? Uh, You're not listening. It means open your ears and open your mind to the truth. The way things are right now. Correct. What's the status quo mean, Eric? The things oh. are Boo, right failure. Boo, failure, boo. Uh, the way things are right now. Correct. What does status quo mean? The way things are right now. It means the way things are right now is the status quo. It's a wonderful soul. I've had an emotion. S C A T U S. It's the first word, status. Then Q U O Quo. Can you kind of just Yeah. Okay, so in the status quo. We have two standards. Tell me about them, Emily. Um, decision -makers Which, what, which of the two standards we're talking about, first of all? Reasonable suspicion and probable cause. Right. And what do they do? It gives them more discretion and power to decision makers. And you all you know what? Where do they do their decision making? Where? Who are they who make these decisions? And what are they deciding to do? Exclude yeah. evidence. Exclude evidence? That sounds like a good idea. What will happen if they exclude the evidence? Eric? Less people uh, less people on campus. I mean the guy on trail. Well, the person on trial will be less likely to be found guilty. Right, good. How's she feeling? Um, 
so 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 but uh but anyway uh i want you kind of do rehearsal with her yeah of course so uh because uh, sorry we're coming in a little late because uh, uh, she probably will stay just one hour okay well i'll have her do it i'll take a break in a second and then uh -huh. when I come back from break i'll have her do it in front of these guys and me and you if you want to be in his time obviously uh and I I because I need to. Yeah, totally. yeah, then uh, then I will pick her up. Word. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Give me about five minutes. I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette. When I come back smoking a cigarette, then I want you to do your speech for everybody, okay? And then after that, well, I'll explain it in a second. After that, then we will talk more about debate in a little while, okay? So, elementary children, I just wanna. Thank you for watching Talking with Famous People.